So if you wanna make a million dollars, I've got a course to sell you. In the next 30 days, you will be a millionaire. Yeah, right. Anyway, get rich quick, huh? Why are you after it? Why are you even watching this right now? Matter of fact, most of you just watching this, you bought into that, leave. Don't watch this video any longer. But for those of you that wanna build long-lasting wealth that lasts and transcends multiple generations, from the lessons learned from the richest and wisest king who ever lived, this is King Solomon who wrote the book of Proverbs. Well, we'll unpack that in here. Proverbs 13, episode 13 of the Wealth and Wisdom series here on the Seven Figure Squad, starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. What's cracking, everybody? My name's Smart Guy, Matt Zapali here. Haley and Tia from Dallas, Texas. And welcome to another episode. We're going to uncover and unpack another proverb for the week. But if you haven't done so already, and you're watching this video, and you think it's created some value for you, please consider hitting like on this video. And if you watch a couple of our other episodes and you have not yet done so, please consider hitting subscribe if we continue to help you in your journey to building wealth, wisdom, prosperity, and happiness throughout your financial journey. So with that being said, uh, we are so close to 150,000 subs, so we are right there, and it would be very encouraging and very exciting to see you subscribe if you haven't done so already. All right, so let's get into it. Get rich quick, huh? Why are we so attracted to get rich quick? Why are we so attracted to lottery? Why are we so attracted to gambling? <sighs> I remember when I was in high school, and I remember I used to cut class my senior year in high school, and I'm the first one to admit this. And I remember studying the track guides because in Chicago, I lived by two horse race parks, which was at that time a Sportsman's Park and Hawthorne Park, which is no longer there in Cicero. But I remember I bought into gambling as a senior in high school. My entire track season, I blew off. I could have been good. I could have excelled in track, but I wanted to gamble. There was such a bug that got to me from taking a $2 bet and making $1,000, $2,000 for a trifecta on the horses. Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. But I realized that there was a sin. I realized that, forget I really realized the sin. I just knew that it wasn't good. And I realized that why are we so hooked on things that we can't control? And I realized what gambling does. I realized what that endeavor does. It feeds into an area of our spirit that says, I want to get something for nothing. And as we're reading the book of Proverbs, as we're reading what the King Solomon, the richest and wisest king who ever lived, as we continue seeing his words and reading his words and understanding his words and what he's telling his sons and what he's telling us through the book of Proverbs and later on Ecclesiastes is get rich quick is a fool's game. You're always watching your back. It's never enough. It's always the next, the next, the next, and you're never content. You're never satisfied. So in Proverbs chapter 13, I found 25 different skill sets, 25 different sayings, and two major categories on personal growth, because listen, before you receive wealth, before you receive money, if your mind and spirit is not ready to receive it, then your cup is gonna be overflowing and there's gonna be a lot of waste. So in other words, you're receiving a, a, you know, this, this bucket of money, you're receiving this opportunity, but if all you got is a teaspoon going to this thing, it's gonna spill, it's gonna waste, and next thing you know, you can look back and say, wait a minute, what happened to my bucket of money? What happened to my, this, this splash of cash? That I, what happened to it? Because if you don't grow personally, emotionally, spiritually, guess what? You'll never have enough wealth. I also discovered through studying the book of Proverbs chapter 13 that there's some key areas. Now, there's 25 of them. I'd love for you to study yourself. So don't rely on me to read the Bible for you. I hope that this study here this message here encourages you to find out what God is wanting to send you and having you comprehend and accept in your heart and spirit about how to handle personal growth and building wealth with your real estate investments, with your insurance agency, with your cryptocurrency, with your career, your business, whatever that is, that you read this on your own too as well. I'm just going to share with you 15 of my favorite that I took out in terms of the personal growth category, in terms of the building wealth category, because listen, the worst way to make money is lazy money. Lazy money is the worst money. And everybody right now wants to make a bunch of lazy money. Sit back, chill, relax, lazy money. And now I get working from home, that's a different story. But lazy money, in other words, money that uh, you don't have to work to get, can you get that? Sure. But is it long lasting though? Do, do you want money for now money? Or do you want money for tomorrow money? You want to be 
old money tomorrow or you want to be new money today money and that's it money so let's talk about personal growth here verse 1 of chapter 13 reads like this a wise son heeds his father's instruction but a mocker does not respond to rebukes it doesn't take a fool to see instagram and social media these days to see what happened at the oscars to see what happened to chris rock to see what happened to will smith and the country is so divided on what they would do in that situation but you got to understand in many different areas of the bible there's values and principles that are transcended through the human history and that's why i follow this book versus any other guru out there that can write a book because this book right here has transcended human history and so i remember my grow my growing up I, I remember me growing up and me not listening to my father and anyway let's make a long story short we had a riff okay my father and i always thought we were clashing heads it wasn't until i got out the military and it wasn't until i became a father that i started to understand what my dad was telling me my dad wasn't a man of many words weird he was a man of many words to other people just wasn't a man of many words to me but now I understand being a father myself, having responsibilities myself, being in charge and leadership position myself, and I now understand what my father's going through. And I realized that he's a human. I realized that he has flaws and mistakes too as well, and that the standard of my father is not whether or not he walks on water. Perfection is not the standard for my father. But yet, I was holding him to that. And I understood that, man, he had some instructions to give me that I was refusing to listen to because I'm thinking that my dad doesn't know anything. So just think about that, consider that, whatever that does for you. But that's what discipline meant for me. Number two, verses two and three, it reads like this. It says in verse two, from the fruit of the lips, people enjoy good things. But the unfaithful have an appetite for violence. Those who guard their lips preserve their lives. But those who speak rashly come to ruin. Words are so powerful on either lifting up or breaking down the person next to you. And I realized, even for my children, uh, I'm so proud of my kids and what they've been able to accomplish in their lives because they don't depend on daddy. And I raised my kids to depend on themselves. But they said, hey, hey, papi, I want to do this on my own. I want to respect it. I want to create it. Why? Because I realized also that what they were fed on is how I lift them up with my words as a dad. You can either crush them with your words or you can build them up. The choice is yours. Judging others, it goes like this. One person pretends to be rich, yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor, yet has great wealth. <laughs> Listen, you know, uh, it's so hard to share and do this proverb in today's social media world. Why? Because everybody wants to flex. Everybody wants to show up and show out. You know, people are turned off by the flex and some people are inspired by the flex. But at the end of the day, showing up and judging others, what do you want to express out there? What do you want to show? So if you caught yourself judging other people and you want to change that, please put this affirmation in the comment section below. I will not judge a book by its cover. Instead, I will listen. I will not judge a book by its cover. Instead, I will listen. And the next one, which is showing up. How do you want to show up? Let's read here in uh, verse nine, what it says about being righteous and how they show up. Verse nine, it reads like this. The light of the righteous shines brightly, but the lamp of the wicked is snuffed out. You know, it's a joke around a lot of areas. That do, you, do you enter a room or do you walk into a room? Do you walk into a room or do you enter a room? When you enter the room, does things start to shine brightly? You become a life of the party, your attitude, your character. It just lights up everybody in the room. Or do you leave the room and it's bright in the room? <laughs> you leave the room and everybody's happy, kind of happy that you're gone because you bring your negative attitude out of it. Again, the choice is yours. The next one is arrogance. Okay, you got your first promotion. You're getting recognized. You made your first $10,000 in a month. You made your first $100,000 in a year. Is your cup full? What does King Solomon say about arrogance? Chapter 10, verse 10, it reads like this. When there is strife, there is pride. But wisdom is found in those who take advice. Will you continue to take advice no matter how good you get? Professional athletes, coaches, entrepreneurs, guess what they have? They have multiple counselors around them, multiple coaches around them to help them get better. Next one is expectations. Verse 12, it reads like this. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. I remember having this conversation with my kids when I was broke. You know what I always say to them when I was broke? Yeah, next week. Yeah, next week. Yeah, next week. I got money for that, but next week, but next week, but next week. After a while, my kids, when I was coming up in the world, they stopped asking. They stopped expecting. Say, oh, Papa, you know, you let us down again. You let us down again. I had to come to grips with that. 
because I was wrong. I was making promises to them that I could not come through with. It's funny how you think you're perfecting your kids, but yet your kids end up perfecting you. And I changed that about myself. I had to change that about my character. So now that I got money, now I've got some success to repair that relationship, to say, yeah, hey, kids, listen, you have a different credit score with me now. It's not like you're applying to the bank. You have a different way with me now because let me make sure the expectation with you about what your dad can do for you in your life because I want to show you and share with you what I'm learning because I want you to inherit it one day. Which leads me to the next one, attitude. What does King Solomon say about attitude? Verse 13, it reads like this. Whoever scorns instruction will pay for it, but whoever respects a command is rewarded. Let me give a story about me looking for a barbershop in Chicago. And I finally found a barbershop. How do I know there's a barbershop in the suburbs? Because in the suburbs, they got these man lawns, nobody uses clippers, nobody uses razors, but I wanted to find a city barber in the suburbs of Chicago. Finally found one. Hours said 11 to seven. Next day, I show up at 12. Lights are off, doors are locked. I go to the next, uh, next door to the uh, women's salon. I said, excuse me, ladies, is a barber gonna show up? No, he'll eventually get here. Hmm, eventually get here? It's 12 o'clock. Door sign says 11, he should, he should be already. Didn't show up. I go the next day, two o'clock. Uh, ladies, is the barber here yet? Oh yeah, he just stepped out. I said, would you tell him that if he's gonna put 11 to seven on a sign, that he actually should be at his barbershop between 11 and seven, because I'm a customer and I can refer a lot of business to this barber. I don't know who he is, I don't even know if he's good, but I'd love to find out, can he at least show up at the barbershop when his hours say between 11 and seven? Okay, no problem, we'll let him know. Apparently he didn't take that guidance kindly. I went the third time. I show up at four o'clock in the afternoon. Guess what? Same thing. Three times in a row, I attempt to get a haircut from this barber. Three times it doesn't show up, doesn't show himself up and out. And guess what? A month later, he's out of business. So what expectations and attitude will you have when building your wealth? Common sense. What does King Solomon say about common sense? Good judgment wins favor but the way of the unfaithful leads to their destruction. So how do you build good judgment though? You build good judgment by sadly making a lot of mistakes. But every time you make a mistake, you surround yourself with people that can give you counsel. For example, we uh, had close out last night here in our office. A lot of guys are closing out their next promotion to get to the next level in their business. And make a long story short, I was doing a lot of interviews and a lot of conversation with these guys over Zoom with their prospects. I was over their shoulder field training them on how to talk to potential customers. And after every appointment, for five or 10 minutes, I gave them counsel, I gave them debrief. Why? Because I wanted to make sure they improved next time they did that particular appointment or the next time they had that particular phone call or case scenario with a potential prospect on the phone. I'm helping them build good judgment. Next one is criticism. Some of you guys get trolled online. Sometimes you don't like getting constructive feedback. But what does King Solomon say about criticism? Verse 18, it reads like this. Whoever regards discipline comes to poverty and shame, but whoever heeds correction is honored. This is a tough one. A lot of pride and ego goes about building money, building wealth. There was a guy last night we were talking to and says, yeah, I wanna be a real estate investor, but I'm still working valet. So do you make a lot of money in valet? Yeah, I make between four and $6,000 a month building valet. But yeah, I wanna be a real estate investor. Great, who is in your corner? Who's helping you out? She says, well, I'm learning from books. Would you like to learn from somebody who actually wrote the book that you're reading? Well, you know, I'm busy. Hello, did this guy hear us? Repeat ourselves twice, three times. We couldn't believe what this person was saying. Why? I guess they had it all set. I guess they had it all set reading from a book, driving valet and not investing in real estate. So, hey, to each his own. We'll see how he does this time next year. And last but not least in this category of personal growth is associations. When we're talking about associations. Who do you surround yourself with? Let's look at Proverbs uh, chapter 13, verse 20. It reads like this. Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. And there's other Proverbs that explain it too as well, that good, good character is corrupted by bad company. So who you surround yourself with is so important in your progress or regress of building wealth. If you want to affirm, you want to surround yourself with better people to increase your wealth and prosperity and personal development, put it in the comment section below. I am surrounding myself with good company. 
I am surrounding myself with good company. So how should you go about building wealth? What should money reflect in your life? Let's read here in verse 8, here in chapter 13. King Solomon says, A person's riches may ransom their life, but the poor cannot respond to threatening rebukes. In other words, is money going to control you? Like you're going to make bad decisions based on whether or not I don't want to keep my wealth or not? God says, listen, I gave you everything. It's not you creating your money. King, it's not King Solomon, he, you creating your money. God gave you money. And if he give it to you, he can also take it away. If it's all about money versus all about being God, God can say, hey, listen, if you want to trap your money with wealth, then that's been your new God. That is your new God now. And guess what? Things can be taken away. So what do you say about that? Question you have to ponder. Next one is about how to progress in business. Growing your wealth, growing your net worth, growing your riches, growing your investments. Let's read here in chapter 13, verse 11, reads like this. This honest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Quick side note, one of my favorite shows to watch is Power. Yes, by 50 Cent. Power Chapter 4 featuring Tommy. Anyway, the show is about a drug dealer. It's about becoming the distro now in Chicago. But anyway, make a long story short, I'm always interested in seeing these guys rise in their power dealing drugs, but the more they raise their status in the drug world, the more they gotta look over the shoulder, the more enemies they create, and the more long lasting it shows that it is not. You're either dead, you're in jail, and you're alone. So if you wanna make quick money, all good. I'm not saying that's maybe drugs, it may be something else you make quick money at. Sure, can you make quick money? Anybody can make quick money. But your progress, true wealth, grows little by little. Doesn't mean you take your time either, but good things do take time. You work urgently in the meantime, but if it's a good thing and it's a blessed thing, guess what? It is going to take time to build wealth. Which leads me to my next point. Who should you listen to? Who is in your ear? Well, King Solomon says, hey, pay attention to these people. Verse 14, it reads like this. The teachings of the wise is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. But you got to make sure you follow wise people because in your journey to wealth, success, prosperity, financial freedom, you've got goals. Not only are you along the path of morality, but also right next to it is also the path of immorality. You get there morally or immorally. Again, the choice is yours and what person you put in your ear to guide you and to influence you. Whoever you're listening to, you got to ask yourself this question. In majority of the aspects of their life, do you want their life? Not only their financial side of their life, but their relationships, their relationship with their husband or wife, their relationship with their kids, their relationship with the community. Is their life worth something that you want for? Because if you want that, you want to work for that, guess what? Then potentially you should consider following them. If it's only in one category and it's just money, but they're doing drugs on the side, they're cheating on their husband or wife on the side, they're taking advantage and cutting corners in, in their business dealings, they may not be the person you want in your ear. Are they wealthy? Sure. Are they getting money? Sure. But really, is that a life you want to live? Again, those are questions you have to ask yourself. Number four, inheritance. What does King Solomon, what does God inspired King Solomon say about leaving your children an inheritance? In verse 22, it reads like this. A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. Whew. So in other words, both will have wealth. Okay, a sinner's wealth and a righteous man's wealth. The sinner's wealth, if he is not playing for an inheritance for his children's children, guess what happens to his wealth? It will then evaporate and go to the righteous. But what does a righteous man do? He builds wealth and he leaves money set aside for his kids' kids. Generational wealth. Do you have a will? Do you have trust? Fastest way to get wealth and money into a trust? Without having a lot of money, guess what? Is insurance. So check this out though. What King Solomon says, hey, the righteous have wealth and also the sinner has wealth. Both will have wealth. But the sinner, if he's not thinking about his children's children, he's just talking about himself, me, myself, and I, short-term thinking, short-term spending, short-term investing or lack thereof, guess what's gonna happen to his or her wealth? It's going to evaporate. It's not gonna go to the children's children of the sinner, but it's gonna go to the who? The righteous's estate. People tell me, I'm not, well, I don't believe in life insurance. Well, listen, it's not a religion. It's a financial tool to leave your children's children an inheritance 
and making sure that you have a will and a trust established so therefore Uncle Sam or your neighbor or a family member that you never wanted to touch your money then gets a hold on it, well, guess what? King Solomon encourages you to make sure that this aspect of your life is squared away because otherwise your wealth, whatever you have, is going to go evaporate to somebody else. What do you want to do with your life's hard work? So if you're firm with me that you're going to leave behind an inheritance for your children's children, put it in the comment section below. I am leaving an inheritance for my children's children. I am leaving an inheritance for my children's children. Put it in the comment section below. And last but not least, how do the righteous eat versus how the wicked eat? Everybody eats, right? Well, how does the righteous eat versus how the wicked eat? Verse 25, it reads like this. The righteous eat to their heart's content, but the stomach of the wicked goes hungry. So there it is again, a choice between righteous and the wicked. Both eat, but one, boom, constant food coming in. Why? Listen, when you're making money in a righteous way, where you're not stabbing people in the back, you're not breaking laws, you're not cutting corners, you're doing right by people. The, the morality here is this, you may not make as much money as the immoral person, but guess what? Your money is long lasting. Your pillow is soft at night. Your stomach will be filled. The immoral person, they have wealth, yes, but it's temporary and in short term. So that being said, I'd love to know your thoughts, your questions, your comments. What's your feedback on what you discovered in reading Proverbs chapter 13? What got revealed to you and how King Solomon, the wisest and richest king who ever lived, his awesome one-liners. You do this or you can do with that. You can do with this or you can do with that. What are you discovering about the teachings and sayings of King Solomon? Of what he's teaching and instructing his family, his children? I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Because if you want to know how to go about managing money, building your companies, building wealth, building your success, building prosperity, would you believe it's in the good book? So if you haven't done so, please check out these two videos here. Last couple episodes of the Wealth and Wisdom series, an uh, episode each week, one proverb each week over the next 31 weeks we uncover. So please check out these two other episodes. With that being said, I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know your questions, your feedback. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? Please put it in the comment section below. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.